So the purpose for the market rate survey is you want to know what other organizations out there are paying. What is the prevailing wage rate at which other organizations elsewhere remunerate similar services to what you have in your organization? So how do you gather pay information or how do you establish what other organizations offer for similar services? That is done through a market rate survey. And when you do that, you will come up with pay rates that internally are fair and administered in a consistent manner and externally they be competitive. So the purpose of the market rate survey is you want to obtain pay information so as to know the rates at which organizations are remunerating their staff, how much organizations are paying for services similar to the ones you have in your organization. You want number two to determine the rates at which organizations are awarding pay increments to staff. The pay increments that we award staff, are they uh, in line with what the market is awarding for similar cadre of, of staff? You want to know number three, how your pay compares to the market so as to know, are we paying at rates that are above, below, or equal to the market rates? You want to know salary reviews, how organizations review salaries, determine the amounts to be awarded in terms of salary reviews for the various positions that the organization has. You want to know the entry level salaries. At what rate does the organization pay staff? Entry level, you look at say the, the pay scheme for the civil service or parastatals. The entry level salary is fixed. Indeed, the entry level grades. You cannot join the structure in the civil service at any job grade. There are specific entry level grades. So what is the salary rate for entry level employees at entry level? What is also, oh, that is critical information. If you get, for example, with the levels of uh, unemployment prevailing, there's a high level of desperation as it comes to labor services. So people are ready, are willing to take on anything that the organization will offer, whether or not, that is uh, the best. So you may get somebody has even 10, 10 years experience, but they've been unemployed for a long time. So because of the level of desperation, when a job opening comes up, they take whatever is offered. So when you're talking about uh, the survey, you want to determine the entry level pay. So the fresh recruits, this is the rate at which they will be joining. If on the other hand, we have such employees who are joining us at entry level grade, can we adjust and we have them start at pay levels that are a bit higher to recognize the qualifications and the experience that these persons have over there? You also want to determine, are there special circumstances in which the organization may be forced to pay to determine and offer pay rates that are above the market rates. Are there unique circumstances where an organization offers some aspects of variable pay, pay that varies based on performance, based on contributions, based on experience? based on skills, et cetera. So do we have variable pay incorporated in the pay levels that organizations similar to the ones we have offer? Then also you want to determine the range and type of benefits that the organizations out there offer. Are they, how do they compare to what you give your employees? That will then inform you 
in being able to develop and come up with an attractive pay scheme for your staff. So the aim of uh, the market rate survey, when we carry out a market rate survey, we aim to do what? Number one, we will aim to obtain relevant, accurate, and representative pay information. What we are paying. How does this information that we are collecting match? Number two, you want to ensure that you obtain pay, data, pay data of organizations that are similar to yours, that the pay levels, pay rates that you will be giving should match what similar organizations elsewhere offer, so as to allow you to compare like for like. So what we are paying, how does it compare to what other organizations similar to ours are paying? You want to obtain up-to-date data as possible. Those pay levels that were used in 2014 but you ask, what are the pay levels as used now? We are in 2022. Use that pay information. Then how do you want to interpret this data once it has been collected and then analyze it, analyzed, interpreted, and then use it to determine the pay levels of the employees that you have, that you want to remunerate? So it is important that you collect the right kind of data and then analyze, interpret, and use it in setting pay levels for employees of the organization. So determine what others are doing. And then after that benchmarking, you use that information to set pay levels for your staff. So what is the process of market rate survey like? The process of market rate survey is you want to, in a systematic manner, obtain market rate pay information. And the information or that you will uh, want to obtain should be valid, should be reliable, should be comparable that any expert who commissions and undertakes a similar survey should by and large get results that are almost similar to what you will have obtained. So the organization will want to select a few benchmark positions. These are representative positions. For the most part, you may not collect pay information for all the jobs that you have in the organization. So you select a few representative positions from where you will collect the pay data, then you grade and then use that information to uh, now make projections as to what the pay rates will be for other similar positions out there in the market. Now, when you are carrying out the survey, you want to compare like for like. Comparing like for like would mean you want to identify firms that have attributes similar to your organization and what they are paying and use that information to determine the accurate market rates for these services. So you the correct identification of firms that are similar to yours, you want to consider number one, location. Identify firms in the same location, same locality. Not firms that operate in totally different environments from yours. Look at the national rates, the regional and uh, local. What are the rates applicable? That are found in Nairobi will have uh, a handyman who earns seven, 800 per day. The same food is somewhere in Webuye up country, will have a handyman earning 400 shillings per day. 
varies based on the location. Minimum wage in the US is about, give or take, $15 per day. You work out that, that is $15 per hour. You work that out, it's about 1500 per hour. So you work that out per day and compare to what we have locally and you will realize pay rates totally different because of location. You would want to look at industry, in which industry are you in? Are you in manufacturing, cement, IT, financial services, so that you compare firms that are in similar industry to yours. You want to look at the organization in terms of the size and scale of operation. How does the organization compare to other organizations similar that take, for example, banking? We have banks operating at different levels, tier one, two, three, level banks, etc. So when you are looking at uh, market survey, if you are in a tier one bank, the equities, KCBs, and uh, NCBA, you will compare yourself to such because you are similar, same operating, same category, size of the organization and scale of operation. You'd want to consider salary turnover. If you're an organization whose entire salary budget for the year is give or take 100 million, compare, you cannot compare yourself with a teacher service commission, salary budget 350 billion per year because you're not operating same salary turnover debt. So CHRM cannot compare itself with Teacher Service Commission benchmark and use the same, same model for remunerating because here we are having 100 employees or less. They are the other side, 400, 300,000 salary turnover. Number of employees remunerated according to location. Functions. What are the job functions that we have? General management, production. Uh, manufacturing, that has to be clear. Sectors, are we in private, are we in public? And if you are in private, you look for firms similar to you. If you are in public, you look for firms at the same level and scale of operation as you are. Don't look at uh, public, say they parastatal. Parastatals are categorized based on their size, scale of operation, revenue generations, et cetera. So that central bank, KRA, uh, pipeline, KPA are not at the same level at KBC. They may be both parastatals, but we have category A parastatals and another lower category of parastatals. So look for Firms similar to yours, like for like. Then the nature of jobs that you have and the range of duties and responsibilities, take those firms that are similar to yours. So that helps you in identifying which firms to focus on in your survey. Now, when you want to do a market rate survey, you will want to prepare survey instruments. And then you will send these survey instruments to the firms that have been identified and uh, using the instruments, you should be able to obtain the information that you seek. In accuracy of your results would mean you prepare the questionnaire, and you will send these questionnaires to the firms that you want to obtain market rate data from. But the questionnaire alone does not suffice because there are situations where positions you have in your organization 
may not be similar to positions in the other organizations. So if you ask them, how much are you paying for this range of jobs, they will tell you we don't have such positions in our organization. So they, will, they might ask that you get, it, it is important that you give them the questionnaire plus other information that will give a lot more details about the positions to aid in uh, matching and then being able to fill the questionnaires accurately. So for you to be able to get a high degree of accuracy during this uh, process, you want to have the right structured questionnaire and with this additional information that will help these firms that you want to complete the questionnaire for you. You may give them the questionnaire plus a list of the job titles. So as they send, as they analyze, the job titles, they will know these are the positions and then they fill the information. But the job titles alone may not be sufficient. You may get in an organization, you have secretaries. In another organization, there are no secretaries. We have maybe admin assistants. So if you ask me how much you are paying secretaries, I will say we don't have serious secretaries in our structure. So the title may not suffice. Therefore, you might prepare a brief job description for every uh, job position that you have. This is to guide that person. Do the correct job matching as they fill the questionnaire for your benefit. Alternatively, you might have a capsule job description. A capsule job description is basically, there is a template that is designed that for every job, you will summarize it up to 250 words. So we have a structured questionnaire, a structured job description uh, fit in a template. So every for every position, that therefore makes it easy. So as I look at the questionnaire, you are asking how much we are paying uh, secretary. We may not have a secretary position in our organization, but looking at the job description of your admin assistant, I will know these are the same position. And then I give you the pay information that you seek in your questionnaire. There are times that you will give the questionnaire and a full job description for all the positions. Or in other situations, the questionnaire will be accompanied by a full job evaluation report to support uh, and ensure that the person to fill the questionnaire for you has the right kind of info and details that they need for accuracy of your market survey as you desire. So what is the procedure? This firm that wants to carry out a market trade survey, what do you want to do? You want number one to identify the firms that will be involved in the survey, recall the consider considerations we say, same lo similar location, industry, sector, etc., so that you get like for like. Give or take about 10 to 12 firms, if you identify that, would suffice in terms of helping us with the survey. Decide on whether you will carry out the survey yourselves or you will rely on an external consultant. If you opt for yourself, then you will have your internal uh, team to do it. Get your CEO to write to the CEO of the targeted firms and seek their permission for you to carry out data collection on remuneration and benefits. In many organizations, they will tell you remuneration and benefits, confidential. They cannot dispose, uh, divulge such information. But if they have authority from the CEO, then 
they will be able to divulge such pay information. So if from CEO to CEO, then cascading to the HR, then you'll be able to collect the data that you seek for purposes of the survey. Then prepare the questionnaires that you will use. Pretest the questionnaires internally to ensure that uh, they are sufficient in terms of enabling you to collect the data that you desire. Then visit the, question, the firms that you want to pay information from and uh, seek uh, have introductory meetings, share with them the questionnaires so that they can feel, then you will do the collection. And once the data is collected through the questionnaires, it has to be analyzed and uh, uh, made sense of before we write our report as to the survey output. But it's important that we verify the data to ensure it is a correct representation. You want to make sure as they are making or filling the questionnaires, you are available to make clarifications to guide them so that they fill the, data, the questionnaires correctly for purposes of you being able to obtain the correct data that is useful for preparing your pay information that you see. Then analyze this data and use it to establish the competitive pay that you want. Once the report is out, then uh, take it through the necessary approvals to be approved by the board management before the executive will then be given to implement. But of course, whether or not the output of the uh, report will be implemented will be vary depending on the market stance that you have as an organization. Are you a market leader or just another player within the sector? And that determines how you will use the pay information. So that if you know the market rates are, say, for a given position around 100, and you're already paying the person 120, then you cannot increase pay rates. On the other hand, if you know the market rates are at 100, and the person is earning 80, then you begin asking questions. Do I need to increase the rates for these services? So the pay stance that the organization will have will be informed by the policy that the company has on remuneration. So what are the methods and approaches that we use in market rate survey? So there are various methods that are used to obtain market rate pay information. These methods include the company survey where the that company commissions and carries out the survey. There's a salary club survey. There's analysis of job advertisements. There's reliance on consultants where the consultant will have done the survey and then they published the uh, results and the other forms of market intelligence. So method number one is a company's own survey, where the company that wants to obtain market rate information, they basically will prepare their own survey instruments. They will finance the exercise. They will collect the data. They will analyze the data and use it to prepare a pay package for the organization the output of that survey will be for the company. So either we said you can use internal consultants or you can rely on external or, or, or internal resources or external consultants. So the procedure is similar to the procedure we outlined, the general procedure for commissioning the survey. One, drawing up a list of compatible firms that will be targeted during the survey. Approach each firm and obtain their consent to participate in the survey. It is important that as much as possible, you assure these firms that the information obtained will be handled by a responsible person, will be handled competently and in confidence, 
will be used solely for the purposes of the survey and that your firm will be willing and ready to reciprocate should they be asked to do as much in the future. And also make the process as uh, simple and simplified as possible. Even the questionnaires that you give out should be those that are well-structured, easier to fill and collect data using. Step number three, you want to prepare the data collection instruments. Do normally we will use questionnaires or some may also prepare a list of questions, the interview schedules, and then use that for data collection. As much as possible, make it as simplified, straightforward as is uh, possible. And also the additional instruments that you will need. You need also to prepare these additional survey instruments the job descriptions and specifications that will accompany the questionnaires. The ones that I said will be useful for purposes of job matching. Then send these questionnaires to the participating firms, let them fill and uh, make follow-ups, be ready to give uh, clarifications, just to make sure that using the questionnaires, you're able to collect the right data that you need, all the information that you want to prepare uh, relating to basic pay, pay scales, overtime, actual earnings, pay increments, etc., must be well structured and captured in your questionnaire. Once the data is, uh, the questionnaires are done, collect them, analyze, and present them in a format that will be useful in terms of enabling management to make the right decisions, issues to do with basic pay, allowances, and any other special circumstance pay distorted maybe because of bonuses, overtime, pay increments, all these must be correctly captured in your uh, our, uh, re report. So if you analyze right, you will get that. Then also the information relating to uh, the output can only come about if you analyze it using statistical tools that are available and open to the organization. So commission your own survey. Make sure you don't rely only on your internal resources because in many organizations, you may have an HR team that is not very strong when it comes to statistical analysis, et cetera. So you might, if that is your organization, be forced to look for an external consultant to do that. Approach number two is analysis of job advertisements. Analysis of job advertisement, if you get a well-structured job advertisement, is intended to attract candidates for the positions that we have in the organization. So a well-structured job advertisement will include all pertinent information about the positions, including salaries, that you look at positions advertised by governmental agencies, the Public Service Commission. Even these international agencies, the UN and uh, such bodies, in their job advertisements, they will include pay information. That from such pay information, you are able to accurately make a decision whether or not you will apply for the position. So from analysis of job advertisements, if you get, say, job advertisements for uh, made in March 2022, for HR assistants or HR manager positions, and you get several advertisements, and they happen to have included the salary ranges, then uh, 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 collecting this data, analyzing, will give you an accurate picture as to the current prevailing rates of pay for HR managers in 2022 March. So such an approach is cost effective, will save time on the exercise, and uh, we'll be able to collect information that is current and updated. And uh, in the job advertisement, since it's simplicity and clarity, 
the information can easily be contained or obtained in an easy to use format. And you can also compare industry by industry. Challenge, the advertisements are intended to attract candidates. So the salary and pay levels indicated at times may not be an accurate depiction of the situation on the ground. Advertisement at times may contain insufficient information about the jobs, hence making it difficult for us to make accurate comparisons about the positions that we want to remunerate in the organization. And then many job advertisements do not contain pay information. Anybody who can tell us, why is it that in your job advertisement, you fail to include pay information? How much you are willing and ready to pay for similar, for those services? Anyone who may want to give us a reason why organizations will not include pay information in their job advertisements? Anyone? Anyone? Colin. Yes, Malimu. Does your organization or have pay advertisement, pay information in your job advertisements? No. No. Anyone who has? What would be your reason, Pauline, for not including such information in your job advertisements? Pauline? Uh, I'm not sure what well, do you suppose would be the reason. I think the salary is not that attractive. So it would instead of attracting candidates, it would it wouldn't really attract people to apply for the jobs. If it is not attractive, yeah. It may act as a disincentive. I was being told of an organization X that wanted to recruit some uh, marketing executive. In their thinking, they had budgeted to pay five, about 50 to 80. That was their range. Then they shortlisted. Unfortunately, they, they did not include this information in the pay in the advertisement. So they shortlisted candidates, invited, is it five for the job? They come for the interview. All the candidates are asking for somewhere between 200 and 250. Yet the candidates, the organization was willing to pay between 50 and 80. It's like they had not done a well market uh, survey as to what firms are offering for similar services. Ultimately, they did not get any more. In fact, the candidates felt wasted. There was one who was telling me, he came from Eldoret, had to come by a plane. He was already he's earning maybe 150 in Eldoret. He thought this being a big entity, they'll be paying more. Shock on him. So he felt cheated and wasted. So those organizations that don't include pay information make it difficult for us to rely on analysis of job advertisements. Approach number three is a published service. You have these consultants. Consultancy firms, the PwC, the Deloitte, KPMG, etc., some of the leading firms around it. Yeah. They will carry out market survey periodically. Once the survey is done, they analyze and prepare reports. Now, those firms that want market rate data, rather than commissioning your own survey and carrying it out, you go to the consultant and you purchase the report. So the report is prepared to cover firms, different organizations, different industries, 
regionally, nationally, internationally, the rate may be covered. So if you want market rate information, you approach the consultant, they, you purchase the report, and you have your market rate survey data. Then you can use that for making your decisions. Consultants, that is their job research. So you are sure whatever output you will get from the report is factual, done by experts, and will be useful in terms of enabling you make the correct uh, outcome as to market rates. They have experts, and that is their job. So advantages, this will maybe cost effective, especially for a big concern, maybe a faster means of uh, obtaining market rate data. So long as you have the money, you go and pay and you purchase the report and bingo, we are done. Then it is done by experts, including experts on research, statistics, etc. So whatever analysis that you will have is reliable and useful. Consultants have a reputation. So if they go to any bank, they go to any organization, be it a blue chip, be it a leading player, they will get the information because they are reputable firms. But if you go to a, as a private consultant or a private HR practitioner to uh, Safaricom to equity and seek their pay information, they'll tell you pay information is confidential. But the consultant will easily be able to get the same information by virtue of who they are in the industry. And then the report can be staggered, can be arranged and classified and generated depending on need. Indeed, as much as they generate general reports, there are those are situations where you may want specific reports. They will give you such specific reports, but of course that may be more expensive if you want industry specific or section or regional specific reports. So analysis of job advertisements or, or rather of uh, if you rely on uh, these consultancy reports, relatively expensive to a small scale operator, then information at times may be sh shared until they sell you a stale report by the time you're acquiring it. The accuracy of the report at times, you may not be able to watch it because you are not the one who did the survey. The consultant at times may target the leading players, the blue chip firms in the industry, Therefore, the output that they give may not serve the interest and needs of small scale concerns. Then the survey may at times not generate the pay information in the format, either the specific information that your farm needs, or it may not be in the format that you need it as a farm. Analysis of the output of the reports. So you can purchase the reports from consultants it has its merits and demerits. Then we have salary clubs. Salary clubs operate as a charmer, where you will have, especially I know of uh, HR practitioners in say the insurance sector and these international NGOs, they have some, uh, some club where from time to time they meet to discuss HR issues, concerns, affecting them in their sector. So they meet, is it monthly, is it bi-monthly, depending on their groupings. Then during those meetings, they, in those clubs, are able to discuss and deliberate on HR issues affecting them. So under a salary club, you will have a situation where such clubs, are formed. And then members of the club are able to share and access pay information from the other club members. So if you want to carry out the survey, just go to your club, invite the members, ask them to share with you pay information, and you easily get the pay information you seek from your club. 
But uh, these clubs normally operate informally. So out of friendships and uh, the relationships that uh, the members have, they are able to share such uh, information informally. But for successful operations of the club, they need to establish a code of conduct that will spell out issues such as eligibility. Who is eligible to join and access information shared through the club? What kind of information will be shared through the club? Who can gain access to the information that is shared through the club? What degree of confidentiality is there as regards using the information obtained through the club? How will, will we ensure that members are able to reciprocate and share relevant, accurate information when sought from time to time? Such are issues that the code of conduct for the club must address. So when you form such a club, you're able to obtain market rate information in a cost-effective manner, in a faster manner, the information you might seek as be as specific as possible. And uh, since we are operating mostly or largely on trust, then you can be certain that the members will share useful information that is trustworthy. And then you can also assure the confidentiality of the information obtained through the club if confidentiality is assured. Disadvantages, there is no legal mechanism for enforcing the code. Therefore, some members may not take it with the seriousness it deserves. Then uh, clubs operate mostly on trust. Who says trust will always be there between the members? So trust may be lacking. And then some members may misuse the information shared through the club and use it even say poach staff. You end up poaching staff who are not, uh, who are in other organizations and using, because you know how they are underpaid, poorly paid in organization X, you can use the information obtained through the club to poach them. And then uh, since the clubs operate mostly informally, then some members may not take the club and its operations seriously, thereby negating its application when it comes to uh, market rate survey. Other methods of obtaining market rate information go to professional bodies. You should be able to go to YHRM and they give you pay rates of what HR professionals in different levels from assistants to directors should be paid in different sectors. I don't know if they have such information, but they should have. Professional journals should be able to analyze and from them, you obtain such pay information. You have uh, employer associations, FKE is an association of employers. It is them who are paid. So they have their analysis of pay reports. You should be able to obtain pay information from them if you are a member. Trade unions and their umbrella bodies such as court, they also carry out surveys from time to time. Before they go to negotiate with employers, they should know what the market rates are. So you can obtain pay information from them. Or governmental publications. From time to time, maybe a new entity is established. The Kenya Gazette will cover that, including how they'll be remunerating for that entity. Then there's also the good old internet. From the internet, you can obtain all the data that you want. So those are some of the approaches or methods that you will use in collecting market rate information. So once the data is collected, it is analyzed and presented in a format that would be useful for management decision making. The analysis of data normally will rely on statistical tools. Here we look at tools such as measures of central tendency that look at the mean, mode, and uh, median of the values, then you make sense out of it. Market rates are the median observation point to market rate, not the mean, not the mode. 
median is where you collect the data, then you arrange the values in ascending or descending order. Then look at the value that sits in the middle where 50% of the farms are paying below, 50% above, that is the market. You can work out measures of dispersion where you compute the percentiles and quartiles and from the computations, you are able to analyze the distribution and know what percentage or what proportion of farms are paying above, below, and the distribution and make sense out of the data that you will have collected. You can calculate mean, variance, standard deviations, analyze and make sense out of the data, the deviation from the mean, and use it in making your decisions. Or you can employ uh, computer-aided applications like SPSS to analyze the data and uh, use the output for decision making. Or you can work out regression correlation analysis, try to apply the formulas, analyze the data set, get to the degree of correlation or the factors at play that determine pay levels and uh, trying to develop a regression model, apply it and determine the rates at which organizations will pay using the variables akin to what you have in uh, your data that you will have collected. So you employ those approaches to collect, analyze, and present data. That is the data that then you use in establishing competitive market rates. That competitive pay is pay that compares favorably to what other organizations offer for similar persons in the labor market. Competitive pay is developed in such a manner that internally it is fair and consistent in terms of how it is applied, but externally it is competitive. What we pay vis-a-vis -vis what other organizations pay internally and externally competitive. So you want as an organization to come up with pay rates that at worst is equal to market mm -hmm. rates. Not pay rates that are below market rates. Because if it is below market rates, chances are you are not able to attract the best. Mm -hmm. And even if you attract them, you cannot retain them. You cannot motivate them because you are paying them at below market. If you pay at uh, average rates, then you will get average employees output, performance, productivity, etc. If you pay at above market rates, it might be costly to be organized. And especially if it, it is not matched with the corresponding increase in output and performance and productivity to justify paying rates that are above market rates. So knowing what market rates are, you are then able to ask how competitive is your pay rate? Are you paying at rates that are below, equal to, or above market rates? So once we determine these rates, we will use the rates as a basis for pay negotiations, depending on the pay posture that as an organization, we will have adopted. So we know what market rates are. So once we know that, then we sit to negotiate with the employees and their representatives. We can negotiate rates that are above or below market rates, depending on our pay posture, our pay philosophy, et cetera. We are able to ensure we pay rates that are guarantee confidentiality. Because whatever we, we are paying, we don't want a situation where uh, what we are paying varies significantly to 
market rate. So we can guarantee confidentiality on matters paying if whatever we are paying is comparable to market rates competitive. Will help us also when we are recruiting in screening candidates. I gave the example of a firm seeking to pay 50 to 80, and the candidates they shortlist, their salary range is 200 to 50. So the company would not have wasted their time, and even the candidates, if they had known what the rates are for the salary range at which the organization will be uh, remunerating. So once you know the market rates, then you can use that information to screen the candidates and determine the rates at which uh, only those who fit within your salary range are the ones we will invite and consider for your interviews. So ultimately, in establishing market rates, what you want to do, number one, you want to compute the median wage for oh, a given range of job, jobs, that median rate is the uh, rate that we will consider the market rate as it will give a clear picture as to what oh, job holders will expect that the organization will offer for similar services and experience uh, education, qualifications, et cetera, in the industry. Number two, mm -hmm. allows us to understand market dynamics so that we develop pay practices that are comparable to what other firms are doing. Essentially, we make sure that whatever pay we offer match the industry dynamics and what other players are doing. In line with operational cost, we are able to attract, retain, motivate the best skilled workforce that we need in our industry. We are able to determine how much value to attach to a given position. That which you value as an organization, you will be ready to spend so much money. So how much value we attach to a given position is determined through us being able to carry out a market rate survey and obtaining pay information so we know how much to set aside for remunerating the position based on the value attached to that position. Then we are also able to establish the reward mix, how the organization will uh, strike a balance between the financial and non-financial rewards and the free benefits that it offers the employees. Because what you are offering should mirror what other firms out there in the market are doing. So an organization structuring, or as it structures its uh, compensation package, you'd want to know uh, how other organizations balance the package so as to come up with a competitive package that meets the diverse reward needs of the organization. Remember, we have people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, approaching 60 in the organization. So they have diverse needs. How do we balance and ensure we satisfy, we meet all their reward needs through the package that we offer. So we structure our package to mirror what other firms are doing. Also, we are also able to benchmark where we compare ours to what other firms are doing. Benchmarking should be done at least uh, once a year if possible. You need to be at the top of your game knowing what other organizations are doing. If you don't, then you are likely to come up with pay rates that are not competitive Thus, you will not be able to attract and retain the best talent, the motivate and uh, satisfy the reward needs of your employees. So coming up with a competitive pay is of essence to the organization and benchmarking helps us to develop and maintain such a package for the organization. That, in a nutshell, is uh, uh, what we do in uh, our topic on establishing market competitive market rates, how to carry out a market rate survey, and use that information 
to determine the remuneration that we will give our employees.